Hello everyone and welcome to MATLAB Pong, my EngComp 100 program and contest submission. I'm sure you've heard of Pong, it's an old game that was developed by Atari, and my game MATLAB Pong is obviously based off of the original Pong. It's a really simple game where a ball bounces back and forth between two players, and each player has to move their slider to prevent the ball from hitting their side. If the ball does hit their side, the other player will get a point. In my version, the first player to three points wins. The sliders are UI control sliders, and their values can be changed by pressing certain keys. For the ball to bounce off the left or right wall, its position has to be close enough to the slider's value, otherwise the ball will pass and the other player will get a point. This is a flowchart that shows the main elements of the code. Pretty much the entire game is in a while loop, so while the ball hasn't been missed by either slider, if it hits a wall, its speed, slope, and the distance it needs to travel before hitting another wall are determined. Those variables are passed to a function that animates the ball and returns the final position. The first main challenge in making this program was finding a way to animate the ball so that it looked like it was bouncing around the screen. The first method I used was the comet plot, which basically just plots a moving function. This kind of worked, but it was really slow and would just stop at random points. The game worked about half the time, so it wasn't very reliable, and it didn't really look like a ball. After this, I started looking for new ways to make animations, and I discovered this method on MathWorks. My animation code is pretty similar to this, except it uses translations. Basically, how this style of animation works is by using a for loop to change the position of an object a very small distance many times in a row. You can pause the video if you want more detail about how this function works. My code only translates the ball, but you can also rotate or scale objects. I was pretty happy with the game at this point, but there were a few more problems that needed to be fixed. One of the main problems was that when the ball bounced exactly in a corner, it would get stuck. If the ball bounced lower down, the horizontal distance it needs to travel before hitting another wall would be this value. But if the ball is already touching two walls, that distance will be zero. So when the animation function is executed, it returns the position that the ball is already in, and there's no way for it to leave this corner. Initially, there were only instructions for when the ball hits any of the four walls, but I added a condition for each corner, and now it can bounce out of any corner. Another issue was that the ball's speed would change when the slope changed. When the ball hits either slider, a small random number is added to or subtracted from the slope, depending on where on the slider it hits. It's meant to act like a curved surface, so if the ball hits near the middle, the slope doesn't change, and it changes most when it hits near the edges. The time it takes for the ball to travel from one point to another depends on the horizontal distance that it travels. If you compare these two paths, the ball travels a farther distance than the top path, but they would take the same amount of time to move from the start to the end point of this translation. So I use this equation to correct for this. C speed is the increment in the animation for loop, so it will determine how far the ball moves for each execution of the loop. It takes into account the slope of the ball and the dimensions of the playing screen. Compared to before, the movement of the ball looks a lot more natural. Another problem with the game was that only one slider could move at a time. I had a function associated with each slider which would cause them to change their value if a certain key was pressed but the function on one slider would only execute if that slider was selected, and only one could be selected at a time. I fixed this by combining the two functions into one function, and making it the callback to the figure, which is the parent of both sliders. The handles of the sliders were passed to the callback function as arguments, so only the figure had to be selected for both sliders to move. This is a short timeline of the development of the game. There were quite a few more versions where I made small edits, this just shows the main milestones. I used radio buttons, editable text boxes, and a push button as part of the graphical user interface for the title screen. When the start button is pressed, a function that opens the playing screen and starts the game is executed. The selected level, which determines the straight speed of the ball, and the player names, which are displayed on the playing screen, are passed to this function. This is the final version of the game. It was really fun to make, and I learned a lot about how to create graphical user interfaces, write callback functions, and create animations in MATLAB. I used Word and Paint to make diagrams, an OpenShot video editor, and Logitech Capture to make this video. This is my GitHub if you want to check out the program. Thanks for watching!